as we uh, alluded to a little bit earlier, we all have our different fitness routines. But as we get into this third act of our lives, we want to be able to have something that we can do every day and sustainably so that we can get to a nice riper age. So we're focusing in on one of the um, exercises that we know to be really good, and that's swimming, because I understand it's got the lowest impact on one's body, is yes. that right? Zero impact okay. on your joints, so right. very, very relaxing. So how long have you been swimming? Um, well, technically I've been swimming since I was about four years old when my uncle threw me into the water and okay. commanded me to swim. Old fashioned style. There old you fashion. go. Right. But uh, in reality, I only actually learned to swim properly uh, last January, wow. where a friend of mine said, everything you were taught in grade school uh, was wrong. This is how to swim. And I tried to swim 50 meters, and I thought I was going to have a heart attack. And then after she showed me how to do it, this is last January, I can now swim eight kilometers effortless. You mean there's yeah. hope for me yet? There's hope for all of us, Bobby. What, what, there's what hope for doing? all of us. What were you doing wrong? Um, well, you remember grade school, right? Mm. You hold the side of the pool, you kick as hard as you can for as long as you can. Yeah. And that's really tiring. In the new way of swimming called total immersion, you hardly use your legs. You just glide through the water, uh, minimizing resistance, yes. as a physics teacher once taught me, and you just use your legs to balance yourself, and you naturally just slice through the water with your but arms. But how do you propel yourself? With your arms? With your arms, mostly. Does that yes. mean you have to be underwater? Uh, your body has to be level. You don't want to be too high up because there's water resistance too deep or for okay. obvious reasons. Right. So just really at water level. Where do you swim here in the Philippines for open swimming? I, uh, uh, bias us all out there. My heart belongs to Anilao, okay. uh, Batangas in particular. So I don't know how many people really understand or, or are even aware that uh, Batangas is part of the so-called Verde Island Passage, mm -hmm. which is uh, encircled by Marinduque, Romblon, and the two Mindoros, mm -hmm. with Isla Verde right in the middle. That's why it's called the VIP, Verde Island Passage. Mm -hmm. 2005, an international group of scientists presented data to prove incontestably that the Verde Island Passage is the most biodiverse marine spot on the planet. So just imagine, everyone knows about the Coral Triangle. What's more diverse than the Coral mm -hmm. Triangle? the dartboard inside it, the Sulu Sulawesi seascape. Wow. What's the most, what's the bullseye? The Verde Island Passage, two hours from where we're sitting. Apo Reef Apo was Reef the was crown it, yeah. jewel of Philippines Except diving. there was a time that we were really, when they blasting? The yes, area? there was too much dynamite fishing, cyanide fishing, and just sheer overfishing. Okay. Uh, but thankfully, over the years, uh, the locals were able to finally understand through the help of conservation groups, that if they continue to abuse their marine environment, which is also their source of livelihood, they were killing their goose, their marine goose that laid like their the golden, golden eggs. eggs. That's right, yeah. Yeah. Wasn't Juni Kalau involved in that at one point? Many people were very, very instrumental. Uh, WWF, uh, Conservation International, now our own group, Sea Institute, VIP. There are many people out there who now see the importance Put it this way, we, we are alive because we can breathe air. Mm -hmm. Half, more than half the breathable air in the atmosphere comes from the oceans, not the rainforests, not anywhere else. Through, through uh, right. photosynthetic yeah. uh, interactions yeah. under the water, breathable air is produced. If the oceans die, we no longer have breathable air. It's that simple. Coral exists within a very, very narrow temperature mm -hmm. band. And the Philippines is not exempt from that. We have had coral bleaching yeah. episodes. What the scientists are still trying to find out is why do we, why do our reefs uh, get affected but are so resilient? They come back from it so quickly. It's like getting sick. Everyone gets yes. sick, but nothing recovers like the reefs in the Philippines. Really? Yeah. Sure really? Is. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, there is no single silver bullet answer. There, there are several factors that they talk about. The main, the main factor is the same reason why we are so biodiverse. 
it's a Darwinian evolution. Is that what SEA Institute stands for? Does yes. Um, one of our uh, lead scientists who we work with, um, Dr. Meg Burke from mm -hmm. California Academy of right. Sciences, she's the one who coined the name. So we wanted something marine-like, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, so she thought of the word C, but C is an acronym that stands for Science, Education, and Advocacy. So everything we do to help conservation must be scientifically and evidence-based. Bobbitt is involved in another venture called Studio H2O. Mm. Now, Studio Water, I would presume. Yeah. Yes. And so what does it mean exactly? Studio H2O is a group of friends who got into underwater photography and videography and thanks to the magic of social media and Facebook in particular we started posting some of the photos and videos we took and lo and behold a producer got in touch with us said she saw our stuff and asked if we wanted to do a project without telling us what the project was and we ended, we, we ended up filming in Oslo the whale shark oh, feeding yeah. interaction yeah. programs which are so controversial nowadays at the end of that, we found out it was going to be for National Geographic. I mean, they so, didn't tell you before, huh? No, they didn't. I <laughs> probably would have scared the living butandings out of us. That would be one of the things that seniors could probably enjoy going out to the um, Oslo. Or there or are a lot of seniors yeah. in, I think there's in there's Oslo. Now yeah. that you mentioned pros and cons, I think it's more pros for the humans and cons for the for wheel the sharks. Ending. Sometimes it is because, uh, honestly, the challenge with Oslo is it has become so popular, they have sometimes up to 3,000 people a day. Mm. And they can only be in the water from 6.30 in the morning till 12.30 noon. The rest of the time, uh, there's no interaction. The whale sharks are out doing what normal whale sharks presumably do. So you can imagine thousands of people in a very limited span of time can be a bit chaotic and there can be as many as eight or ten whale sharks in that little bay at the same time. Uh, well, is there any negative effects on the whale sharks by having 3,000 people there all, all at one time? Yeah, there have been studies done by local groups like Marine Wildlife Watch of the Philippines and international groups like La Mave, Large Marine Vertebrate Organization. They have data that now shows that the behavior of the whale sharks have changed. They're more shallow for a longer time. They're now feeding horizontally, uh, vertically right. like dogs That's for a longer right, time. The counter argument is they're only fed handfuls of shrimp. Now imagine a 40-foot whale shark. It probably has to eat enough shrimp to fill this entire room. So presumably, during the 12.30 noon to 6.30 a.m. the next day where they're not in the bay being fed, they're probably out there feeding, feeding normally. But nobody knows because no one has tracked them during the rest of that period. Oh, so it's a great scientific project. I think Lamave will be doing that next year. Sharks are amazing creatures. First of all, uh, we like to joke that they are with the, one of the few things that God got right from the get-go. Wow. They have hardly changed in 350 million years of really? evolution. Uh, Homo sapiens is only what? How many a tens of thousands? <laughs> yeah, thousand years, Sharks yeah. have been virtually unchanged for hundreds of millions of years. Well, as you can tell, we have a lot of curious answers. I mean, not answers, questions that need answers. And we're so happy that, Bob, that you came to, to talk Always with happy. us. Can we do this again? Anytime. I'm sure that Anytime. we have a lot. Well, next time we'll be in the water. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Okay. You heard it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> she goes in first. <laughs> Ladies first. You're a true chivalrous gentleman. <laughs> walk on the water, so it's all right. It's there. Anyway, thank you again to Bobit Sintai for joining us. Thank you. And I hope that you'll come back and join us at Privilege Card.